Hey there YouTube, I'm here to review DaVinci Resolve 15, honestly one of the best free video editors that I've encountered in 2018. Competing with HitFilm and other such video editors, it's still high up there in the hierarchy. Now, as a longtime Premiere Pro user, I'm not sure I'll be used to the way DaVinci Resolve cuts, I'm pretty sure it's more similar to Final Cut. However, I am going to hop into there and check out a few how I can chop up a clip and see how I can actually make the end result look. So, if you want to join me for the ride, I'm going to cut this clip up and give you my impressions. So, when we open Resolve, we're greeted with this untitled project. This is very, it's just a bit different from Premiere Pro. When you get open Premiere Pro, you're open with the full editing space, but then you have an overlay window. So, I mean, already this is looking a little different. I'll do a new project. I'll call this um, DaVinci Demo. Okay, so. Okay, this is the first clip we want. Now, this audio I won't keep, so I'm going to see if there's a hotkey to re unlink everything. I know Premiere lacks it, and I, or they might have it, but it's not explicitly listed so let's see link clip control l so if i yes and it unlinks clips um i'm just gonna go ahead and okay this is already different if i delete the audio here it deletes the video even if it's in a different channel that's good to know but it doesn't if i scoot it out okay um can i remove this channel track okay cool. um let's see so let's we want the endpoint is this getting the steady cam balanced i think here would be a good endpoint so we'll okay ripple edit works well like from here I think so yeah this is the next scope we need okay and then we can import and it will actually cut the back off of the clip that we don't want so I'm gonna use our hotkey control L I'm going to see if there's a so if I trim that down to zero okay so that's how you remove clips like and I believe okay so if I do that it snaps. This is magnetic like Premiere. Okay, so. Let's see. Okay, we, we want the back of this, so. Okay. That's actually very useful. It saves me a bit of work so I don't have to end up cutting. I don't end up having to cut here and then drag this clip over. I can just push that clip over. I mean, Premiere has a similar feature, but... So let's find a paper towel rip. I'm curious, can we preview? Yeah, we can preview clips from the timeline. That's good. Um, so I'll drag that in. So it blends in well. Control L, drag that to the end of the clip. Because we don't need any of that audio. And already I'm seeing. where some color grading. And yes, I do realize that. Oops. Yes, I do realize that I turned the water on here never turned it off so I'll have to find a clip of me turning the water off so we'll drag that above control L drag to the beginning this is beginning to be my favorite move I don't know if we can just import the video doesn't look like they have that premiere feature in which is most unfortunate. Oh. 
I'll actually bring that down to the same timeline. I feel like that could be a bit shorter, but so I'll drag that in a bit. I could have just used a new method, but so I feel like that's really where we need the action. So And this is where we can bring this clip over. So then the we tear, okay. Yep. Then we bring it to scooping up the tree. One of our favorite takes, it's actually handheld, believe it or not. It, we used an OSS lens on it. Forgot about that. Um so we can actually Okay, yeah, then, but actually this entire take was not done on the steady cam that we, we actually had, no, not steady cam, glide cam that we had in. We, the glide cam's actually up over there, but we actually went ahead and handheld this on our 35mm um, OSS lens that you actually are seeing uh, this video shot on. Alright, and we'll bring that in, because that's where we'll cut to this take. So, Control L. Drag that clip. So let's see. Seems like it runs a bit too far, so. Like. Yeah. So now we're going to. So now this is where a good crossfade will be, just because honestly, no one wants to see the underside of that table, and I'm going to turn off magnetic so I can actually. So this is where we bring it over to this clip. I usually, I can normally just scroll through and choose the latest clip because I know all the other ones, the reason, entire reason we took another take was because the first one was garbage. Let's be real here. And I think, close that. Yep, this is our close shot of the tree, so control L, remove that. Yeah, you can see already how my premiere is kind of rubbed off. I drag it to a completely separate part of the timeline because it's actually set to 50, so it'll take longer for me to. And I feel like it actually needs to be even slower. So 25, actually, yeah, I'm shooting at 60 frames. So. So this is where I'm going to see if I can stretch it a bit with, see if they have optical flow. How do I do optical flow? I mean, actually, I'm going to disinspect your time process. Yeah, optical flow. Okay, so you go into retime process, and you can click optical flow, and you can do it on a per clip basis. Okay, so it goes from... Just a very subtle buffer at the end is what I'm looking for. That will take us very smoothly into that clip. So this is kind of what we've been building up so far, but note there's no sound design whatsoever. And this is where this audio bin comes in. Okay, that works. And then we're just going to see if we can merge these clips. No new pop, new compound clip maybe. Yeah, so sync audio. Okay, that's one nested clip. And then we're just going to bring, I'm not going to use the mixer. I'm actually just going to adjust in here.
paper towel rip. Dry hands on towel. Okay, so now we're going to go to our soap pickup. actually fits really well but we're just going to bring down the level like a fair amount so I feel like the this clip can be brought down a decent amount, so that's better. So this is where we cue our walking scene. So change that clip speed to like seventy two. It doesn't need to match up exactly. I just need to general gist to be mostly similar. And I think the clip is even slower here, so we're gonna change clip speed to like a 58. And then we're going to use our sliding glass door for our hand we're going to turn off magnetic because it's messing me up we're going to drag this clip over here and Now we're going to make a compound clip called wall. So walking one, walking wood, uh, walking wood audio. We're going to bring that down a decent amount and bring this down a fair amount too. We're going to make a new compound clip, call that main audio one. So now I'm actually just going to go and I'm gonna get really lazy here with the music. I already have a predetermined version of this so um, I have actually I scored this entire thing in Filmstro um, if that I want the original um, so I scored the entire thing in Filmstro I didn't mean to click fusion um, it looks node based though um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring every clip in Control Alt L and I'm just gonna remove the video because I don't want that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna 
Okay, so that's the general gist of it. Um, I could add like some nice heartwarming message in this last bit, but I don't really want to because who needs heartwarming? Um, so now I'm very curious if I select each, can I select each clip to edit on? Can I do an overall grade or do I have to grade per clip? So I'm just going to do something really absurd. I'll notice. Okay. Nope. So I'm going to have to grade each clip. It looks like maybe I can, I'm just going to try something video main because I don't really want to spend forever grading this. I mean, I could, but I just want it really quick. So I'm guessing this is node. So add node. I worked with like other node based things such as blender. So I'm guessing add a corrector. Let's see all these lot. Man, most of these LUTs are going to look terrible just because I am a, I shot this on a Sony a6000. Let's see, that actually doesn't look too bad. But that's partially because it's not actually outputting. That looks terrible. <laughs> um, add node corrector. I'm going to try to do something where the colors don't look extreme that extreme so and that doesn't look good okay I can't add a 3d let maybe this that actually looks decent it gives everything a yellowish tint but I kind of like that um so now this is where I really start I mean you get your curves so let's hop into this Luma versus saturation. Boom. I've used curve tools such as these. And honestly, I've noticed this clip. There's some slight color shifting, especially. So I'm going to try to drag the highlights and the shadows muted. I'm also going to have a more extreme color grade on it. So I'm actually going to have, I want the mid to be more saturated, but I don't want that paper towel look all saturated. So now that everything looks yellow, this is where I'm going to kind of bring in my, I'm going to tone that saturation back a bit, but then I'm also going to go into Q versus saturation. So I'm going to select this tone. And I can actually change individual skin tones. My skin tones look absolutely horrendous. Fairlight, I'm guessing it's a fairly standard audio mixer. Okay, you get all, all your per channels. You can bring this in, I guess. This gives you, so you can individually level each two channels. Now let's take a look at Fusion real quick before I finish this up. Okay, well, here too. Revival, refine, right now I'm just trying to find something that's not like, I can actually use and not, not more effect based. I'm guessing this could also be used like Blender with its uh, film remove noise. That's, that could become very useful. So let's check. Now let's take a look at these exports. Okay. File name, maybe fill up, or maybe actually DaVinci 2.0, DaVinci. So let's see, audio, AAC, okay. And I'm guessing you add to render queue, start render. Okay. So now we're gonna let this render out and then I'll actually put together a clip of what it's going to look like in the future when I spend a fair amount of time actually grading the video instead of just doing this little quick, I essentially just glossed over the power of this color grading. 
Okay, so. What are my thoughts on DaVinci? Honestly, I didn't make enough use of the color correction. Like, they have so much here. They have trackers. There's so much I could do here if I really wanted to. I mean, I barely touched the curves even. Um, I'll actually put up on the screen a version of the video that I took a fair amount of time color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And then I'll keep toggling. I'll make toggle that between Premiere and DaVinci. I'll see what I do. Um, but overall, it's for a free editor, this is probably the best thing you can get. I mean, HitFilm is Premiere counterpart, but this is like Final Cut for Windows. This is the best free video editor I have seen, hands down, if you are just doing simple chopping, no, without special effects. Even if you're using HitFilm, I would actually suggest editing in HitFilm, exporting, and then coming in here to color grade. This is an amazing editor. I would hands down gets my recommendation.